Listen to me, you guys. Some joker in here has got a knife. I don't care who it is, but when I hit the sack tonight, I want to find that under my mattress. Understand? My name is Barrett, Assistant Sheriff, Los Angeles County. Our wayside honor rancho is 2,900 acres of rolling hills and rich pasture lands where 1,100 men live, some for months, others for years, some without bars and locks, free to work and to wander, some up the hill in the maximum security prison, learning to conform. At the rancho, men are given the opportunity of redirecting their lives by learning at first hand modern methods of ranching and farming. Not all succeed, and some of those who do often do it against their wills, like the men who come into contact with number 97533, an ex-carnival hustler named Pops Anderson. <laughs> well, after they plunked on their two bits, and I give them the real pitch. So I said, you ain't had enough, eh? You want some more, do you? All right, if you're real red-butted he-men and can stand it, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Where have you been? I'm just outside watching a busload of new fish arrive. Well, last week you was on it, remember that. Say, Pop, you figure you'll find a new fish to work on? I sure hope not. I ain't paid to be no wet nurse. <laughs> well, what was that you was just doing? You used to work in a sideshow or something? Oh, yeah, it's just, there wasn't nothing to it. <laughs> Honest. Got a smoke on there? Yeah. Now, that's funny. I could have swore I had a pack on me somewhere. <laughs> Maybe these is them, Mike. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? He lifted my smokes and I never even felt it. Man, you're pretty good. Good? I'm great. Why, it's an art, son. One that died out with kids like you. In my day, we had to practice like concert artists. Because we was artists. This the empty bunk, Anderson? Yes, Sergeant. This is your new bunkie, Anderson. His name's Mallory. Stow your stuff in the locker here. I'm Anderson. Pops Anderson. Yeah, I heard. Pretty here, ain't it? Not like a jail at all. Look at them hills, all that green. Sometimes it gets a little greener on the other side of the fences. And the guy plans it good, but them fences ain't too hard to get over. But while you're looking around, better look up there, too. That's maximum security prison. The boys call it Max. You want to know something? Half the guys up there at Joe's have figured it was prettier on the other side of the fences. Now they're up there under lock and key, trying hard to remember how good it was down here. All this sunshine, work that builds you up here and in here. Oh, we'll get them back, some of them, as soon as they learn that down here they got to conform. Conform? What's that malarkey? It ain't malarkey, son. It means keeping the rules, doing your own time. 
And if you don't, you get hurt. And so does everybody else. Yeah? Well, for my dough, that Boy Scout stuff's for the birds. I ain't here for a vacation. I'm here because I got banged with a bum rap. Well, aren't we all? I ain't kidding. Sure, it was in my car. I just borrowed it to drive up to Watsonville with thick letters. If you like that kind of work, there should be a breeze for you up here. I hate it. Hmm, brought up on a farm, huh? Nah, a place called Moose Bend, Minnesota. No one ever heard of it. Moose Bend? Oh, I played there. Of course, that was years ago when I first started out with the Carnies. If I remember right, it was a pretty little town. Pretty? I'll say. Prettier than a lot of places you hear about. Come from a big family, huh? Just me. My father got killed. And he wasn't even cold. My old lady married some geezer. Rich, big place, all in wheat. That was my cue. I was only 12, but I run off. Your mother, ever hear from her? She don't even know I'm alive. Well, it's just like you see. This farm is dairy, beef, sheep, and hogs. Go along with it, conform. With your good time, you'll be back outside before you know it. Maybe I'll be outside before anybody knows it. Pepperell, the farm foreman. Guess you're the new man. Uh, Hobart Mallory? Everybody calls me Hobo. You don't know anything about cows? Never worked on the farm or anything like that? I was a laborer, cement worker. Someday they'll send me one man who was brought up on a farm. Well, I guess you'll just have to learn then. There's one way of learning is to start at the bottom. What does that mean? Grab a shovel, clean up the place. When they start to feed, well, I give them a hand with a mash. Later this week, if I've got time, I'll tell you about cows. What we do with them and how and why we do it. OK, Mallory. See you later. Pops, dogging it already. <laughs> I was afraid he was going to be another of that kind. Well, let's get started. Can you handle the cow? Sure. Okay, get her. Your mama don't want you. Come on. Something wrong? Well, it just ain't natural. That's what it is. It's, it's unnatural. What ain't natural? Oh, stupid cow has this calf four or five days ago and won't let it get close enough to her to feed on it. Why can't that foreman be around you sometimes when you need him? What's so tough about getting a cow to... Except the cat. Where is she? Right over there. You guys, you're supposed to know something. You don't know nothing. Time I tried that, the old cow just moved away. All you gotta do is show him his dinner. Show her. Her name's Tilly. 
Tilly, huh? You want a name for this guy, you better call him Willie. Well, I'll be gold darned again. <laughs> you know, there's something about them little fellas that gets me. I, I don't know. So warm and trusting like maybe a baby. Yeah, ain't it? The... Who are you kidding, mister? Like I told you before, this whole deal, all of it, it stinks. I found this in the grass outside of number three. Nice job. Thanks, Sergeant. Is that all you're going to do about finding a knife in camp? Just put it in your desk? Well, nobody can get hurt while it's in here. Oh, by the way, Sergeant, that new man, Mallory, how's he getting along? I detailed him to the dairy farm, like you said, Lieutenant, but from the little I've had to do with him, I'd say he's going to be a tough nut to crack. You signed him to that empty bunk in number three, the one next to Pop Anderson? Yes, sir. Well, you can forget about Mallory for at least a week. You know, it's the funny thing about those hard case boys. After a little time around Anderson, they seem to soften up a bit. Lieutenant, I wanted to ask you about that. It seems to me Anderson's been getting too much free time. Some other time, huh, Sergeant? I've got a week's paperwork to finish up and what's left of today. All right, sir. See, you like it better around here. It'll help you conform. A lot you know. I'm putting in for a transfer. I'm not going to clean up after all these cows. Transfer to what? To the kitchen. That's the place to work. Guy can sit down if he wants to. Keeps an eye open. Who knows? Maybe he gets the kind of food he likes to eat. Uh, it's OK by me. Remember this. The time you do is your own time. How do you go about being transferred? Tell the sergeant you want to speak with Lieutenant Driscoll. He's the man you got to talk to. Yes, Baker? Lieutenant, you got to... Well, you just got to take me off that irrigation crew. Well, maybe we can, Baker, but we'll have to know your reasons. Why? Well, I got four kids. Four kids I want to get back to just as soon as I can, but... But laying that pipe... Lieutenant, you realize that sometimes that pipe's no more than two feet from them fences? Just two feet and I could be over and long gone. I've tried, believe me, but... I just can't take it no more. I don't want to walk out. I want to stay here, put in my time and... Please, Lieutenant, move me someplace else. Any place else, that's all I'm asking. Just put me someplace where I... I won't even see them fences, huh? All right, Baker. We'll put someone else on the irrigation crew. You can start in the kitchen in the morning. Thanks, Lieutenant. Thanks. That's the shell gate. They never did find the little pea because it was never there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hobo, starting in the kitchen? Not me. Lieutenant says I'm strong, so he's putting me on the irrigation crew. You're not only a fool, you're an obstinate, pig-headed idiot. Yeah? Too bad you ain't. Then you'd get out of this dump before they bury you here. That goes for the rest of you guys, too. You haven't got the gumption to get out of your own way. I'll be long gone while you're still listening to that old faker. Addison, the key to the pickup truck that brought you in from the dairy farm seems to be missing. You happen to know where it is? You're wearing the uniform, Lieutenant, not me.
why his guy cop the key to the pickup truck. Some slob here is already in for Grand Theft Auto. And unless that key shows up, he's going to be in here for a whole lot longer than he thinks he is. Up the hill in Max. I'll be back to pick you up later. Hey, Hobo. Come on, say hello to little Willie. He's been asking about you. I'll bet. What do you think happened to that ignition key? Why ask me? I think the sergeant's just plain careless. <laughs> Don't worry about the sergeant. He knows his way around, all right. <laughs> well, you got a smoke on you? Yeah. You dirty. Give me back my cigarettes. Think I got them? Come on, take them away. I said give me them cigarettes. Uh... Come on! All right, Mallory, what's going on? He caught my smoke. Ah, oh, he's just running off at the mouth. I didn't cop anything. He just got it in from me, that's all, because... Well, look in his shirt pocket. You lousy crook. You got cigarettes? Yeah, I got my cigarettes, but... All right, Mallory, we're going to take a little ride up the hill. Maybe you can learn to conform after a few weeks up in Max. You get back to work. Ops, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, framing hobo like that. Me? I wouldn't frame my worst enemy. I'll bet you wouldn't. If it had been me instead of Maori, I'd have killed you right then and there. Yeah, maybe you would, I. But I didn't figure that Hobo would. You know how long he can get up the hill for what you pulled on him? And you know how long he'd spend if he hopped the fence and they nailed him? Now all he needs is to learn that down here, he's got to conform. Where are you going with them books? If Hobo's going to get religion, somebody's got to do some missionary work. Uh, like I told him, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes when Mallory comes back down. If he comes down. After almost two years, this is the first time I've ever seen this place. Real nice office you got here, Lieutenant. Thanks, Anderson. What can I do for you? There's not a thing you can do for me, Lieutenant. Thought you might want to do something for Mallory. You still don't like offices? Lieutenant, in my social set, it looks better that way. <laughs> kind of figured you knew that. I kind of figured you knew I knew it. What do you want me to do for Mallory? Well, he's such a stubborn little hothead, he'll probably be up in Max for quite a while. So here's some stuff that he was reading before he blew his top. He might enjoy reading them again while he's cooling off. All right. I'll see he gets them when he's ready for them. Thanks, Lieutenant. But uh, remember, you ain't doing this for me. It's for Mallory. <laughs> With the arrival of the books, Hobo simmered down, and it began to look as though he had learned his lesson. However, he was kept under close observation for another 10 days, during which he was a model prisoner. At the end of that time, it was felt that Hobo Mallory could safely be returned. Hey, Skip. I want to talk to Lieutenant Driscoll. It's odd, isn't it, Sergeant? But after Mallory asked to be transferred off the dairy farm, he should want to go back there when he comes down from the hill? I thought so at first, Lieutenant, but then I remembered the books Anderson gave you to send to him. You know what they say about farm boys? 
You can take the boy out of the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the boys. Well, maybe his bringing up does show through in the clutch. All right. Pepperell's always hollering because we send him men who don't understand farm work. We'll let him have Mallory back. Yes, sir. One thing I want understood, Sergeant. We've all got to keep a sharp eye on him for the first couple of days and make sure he isn't up to something. After spending ten days up at Max, I doubt if he'll want to get back there again in a hurry. Let's hope so. All right, Sergeant. Hiya, Pop. Well, just get back? Yes, sir. Man, I learned my lesson. Like you told me, I'm doing my own time and I'm conforming. Going back on the irrigation crew again, I imagine? Not me. I talked to some of those guys up in Max who hopped the fence. I'm cured. Then there's no hard feeling? Not me. I know why you did it. Now that I simmered down, I appreciate it. Something cute? Yeah, watch this. I got him in the back, and when I call his name, he comes out answering it. Come on down here where you can see. All right. How about giving me back that key? Let go of me. I ain't got no key. Let go of me, you fool. <laughs> Don't you lie to me. I want that key. I mean it. I'll tell you. I, I... What's going on here? He's got my key. All right, bring it up. Now what are you up to, Mallory? It ain't Mallory, Lieutenant. This time it's me. You started a fight, Anderson? About what, I'd like to know. Excuse me, Lieutenant, I kind of lost my balance. A couple of weeks ago, Mallory seen me steal the key out of the pickup truck. Well, ever since he's been back from Max, he's been nagging at me to give the key back. I couldn't shut him up, so I got sore and I socked him. You socked him? Did you see him take that key, Mallory? Don't ask him, Lieutenant. Here, here's the key. You know what this means, Anderson? You lose all your good time and get a nice long stretch up the hill. Well, I got it coming, all right. Only one thing that worries me, while I'm up in Max, who's going to take care of little Willie? Little Willie? Oh, that's a little calf, Lieutenant. I don't know what he's worrying about. Willie will be in good hands as long as I'm around. All right, come on. The rest of you get back to work. Anderson, the key to that pickup truck was found on the grass outside your barracks the day Mallory was sent up to Max. Where did this key come from? Gosh, Lieutenant, it beats me. Think it could have fallen off your key chain? Something tells me you've gone back to picking pockets. Haven't you learned anything up here? Yes, sir. I've learned you can trust a sheriff sometimes, but you can't trust a con man ever. So Pop went to Max. There was no way to avoid that. However, he was such a model prisoner that his release was arranged in a very short time. Hey, Pop, uh, I think I should tell you this. Uh, while you were up on the hill, I, well, I sort of did something. What's that, son? Well, I had a talk with the chaplain. I told him about my mother, and uh, well, he's going to get in touch with her. And she'll have me back after all I've done. Well, Go to work on my stepfather's farm. I'm glad to hear about that, Hobo. Because that's a place a boy like you should. Yeah. 
Here we go again. I knew guys acting just the way I did. Poor slob. Uh, okay, let's get started. Get the calf. Pops Anderson died a little more than a year ago, but his memory and his good works live on at the Wayside Honor Rancho, where men are given the opportunity to find the good that's in them by learning the simple ways of nature. Now may I present the Sheriff of Los Angeles County, Eugene W. Biscalus. Friends, the members of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department are pleased to cooperate in the production of Code 3 in the interest of crime prevention and rehabilitation. We hope you'll join us again next week for another true case from our files. I thank you very much.